Um, I stand today to talk in support of my friend, the Right Honourable Member for Kenilworth and Southam's really important bill. Um, too often we have pockets of our society where there is not true equality, where there is not true access. Um, and this bill will fundamentally change that. And while some people may think this is just a small change, for my disabled constituents and beyond, this will make an enormous life-changing difference. We talked earlier about ensuring that rural areas in particular and how they will benefit from this Act. Rutland and Melton is an incredible constituency of 462 square miles. I have almost 140 villages and just three towns. So taxis make a fundamental difference to the lives of disabled people living within our communities. But I can attest that we don't have enough taxis. On a Friday, should a surgery or so on run over and I don't have uh, any car travel myself, I've sometimes had to wait up to three hours to get a taxi. On a Friday evening, I will be sleeping in my office. I will not be getting home uh, to my family because there is insufficient taxi access. Now that is for me as an able-bodied individual. For my disabled constituents, that is made all the more difficult. And actually, at this point, I would talk briefly about how this bill could go beyond in future considerations by the government to support women and men who are parents. Because I know that too often I have had a taxi turn up to pick me up as a mother with a pram and two children, and they have seen that I'm a mum with two children, and I'd like to think it's because the children, not because they've seen my face, uh, but I have seen taxis turn and run and refuse to take me as a mother. And I don't know if any of my colleagues have had similar experiences, but the fact that taxi drivers in this company and country, and I will point out they are the small minority, the vast majority of taxi drivers want to do everything they can to support those they carry, but the fact that they are happy to turn around and leave a mother in the rain with two small children under three, I mean, it's happened at least four or five times in my lifetime, and that's only, my children are only three now, so this is something that perhaps we could look at for future revisions to the Equality Act. But on disability specifically, very happily. On speech, and uh, I'm, I'm very concerned to hear of um, the fact that she's been left by taxi drivers. When my private member's bill was passing through the other place, uh, Baroness Brinton um, gave a, a very moving speech about how she, as a disabled wheelchair user, had been turned away by a taxi and, and had had to use her motorised wheelchair uh, in the rain and the battery had run out a short distance from her home. This is clearly not acceptable. I thank my friend because it is absolutely not acceptable and the fact that this bill is having to be brought forward because we have disabled people in our country being charged extra for the liberty, for the joy, for the privilege of being carried is absolutely shameful. And we're very fortunate in Rutland and Melton, we actually have two specific companies who are expert at providing support for the disabled. Um, so I want to pay tribute to Claire's Taxi and Elaine's Taxis, both in Melton, who do a great deal to support our disabled community. Um, they are truly wonderful. Um, but this is important, and it's important because it affects so many, not least in rural areas, because of the absence of bus services. So in both Rutland and in Melton, Centre Bus have put the costs up to their buses. So we are now going to lose the only bus service between Melton and Nottingham, that's the number 19 bus. This bus is so important because it carries people between two major centres of work, it also travels people for, for healthcare needs, and it also makes sure that anyone who supports Nottingham Forest or Notts County Football Clubs and want to go to Trent Bridge are unable to get there which everyone should have the right to do, including our disabled friends and family. So it's really important this bill will help those who are now suffering as a result of an absence of uh, bus services. But I will make very clear, Mr Speaker, that I will be fighting for the number 19 bus service, and I will be fighting for the bus services within Rutland, and Centre Bus will be hearing from me, let me put it on the record, I hope their lobbyists and PR team are listening. Uh, Centre Bus, I will be in touch because it's unacceptable that you are stripping 460 square miles of decent bus services. This bill is also important to me, and I'm sure many of us here in this place will have experience, because I too have a loved one who has recently uh, become reliant on the use of a wheelchair. Um, she means everything to me and is currently suffering from cancer um, that has riddled the entirety of her body, and um, particularly her bones, um, meaning that she is unable uh, to stand or to do uh, much travel. Um, and on this Monday, I'm hoping for the first time in two and a half years to take her somewhere that isn't the hospital. 
and I'm hoping to take her to the British Museum to see the Stonehenge exhibition. No. But I have been ringing around trying to get a taxi to take her to see this exhibition. It's not far, it's only about a half hour journey. And yet every taxi company I seem to ring says, oh sorry, we don't have much disabled, or oh, we can't promise you that there's going to be a disabled friendly vehicle. And I say, well look, you know, do, do we need to bring a foldable wheelchair? Do we need to use an electric wheelchair? What, what do I need to do to make this happen? I want to get her out of the house and to the British Museum for the first time since she had this appalling diagnosis and given the effects it will have on her long term. And the fact that not a single taxi company that I have run so far in London, of all places, this isn't in rural Rutland and Melton, have been unable to promise me that they will help me get my loved one just a half hour journey, this bill will make a difference. And not just for, for all of us who are caring for loved ones who unfortunately have life limiting or um, conditions. So I really I'm am grateful. Please, absolutely. I'm very grateful to my I'm friend right. for, for giving way, and I'm grateful for her support. Uh, she will know that this bill will come into effect two months after it is passed by this House, by the other place, and given royal assent. But would she agree that it isn't necessary for any taxi driver or private hire vehicle driver to wait for the legislation to be passed in order to offer the kind of service that she's describing? They can do that now, and many already do. And I hope that what this bill will do, would she agree, is to try and change the atmosphere so that more and more drivers are prepared to offer the kind of service that she's describing. A absolutely. And this is why it's so important, because we as Conservatives don't want to have to pass legislation to require service providers to provide services to all people. Yep. Every company should not have to sit here and go, when will Jeremy Wright come to the, come to the, uh, come and save us all and make sure that we can get the access we deserve? So actually, he is right. The message that should go out from this place today, and I'm sure we will all be speaking in support of this important motion, is step forward now. You have a choice and you can make sure that you ensure that anyone who is disabled or partially sight or has any other needs is able to get to where they need to. But yes, in two months' time, it is a very welcome news that that would be a requirement and that perhaps I won't be struggling so much to provide basic access and equality of rights uh, to those who I love so greatly. <laughs> During the pandemic, many of our taxi companies did great things, and I've recognised that they probably have become more disabled friendly as a result of that work, so I'm very grateful to that as well. I also think it is important that my right honourable friend has sensibly included a clause which shows that if you can argue that you could not have reasonably known a passenger was disabled, that that will not be held against you. Because again, we do not want to see hard-working, good taxi drivers have that held against them if they did not mean to. Um, but ultimately, the point stands that this is a really important bill for rural areas to give access and equality to all disabled people and for those of us who care so much about making sure that companies step up and do what is right and do what is their duty. Um, so I thank my right honourable friend for all his work on this. It's sad it's taken so long to get here. It's sad that it requires legislation, but it's absolutely the right thing to do. And from my loved ones, um, I thank him. And let's hope that perhaps we could have a look at what more we could do to make sure that, as I mentioned earlier, no mother is or father is ever left in the rain with their children with a taxi driver driving away from them. Thank you very much.